James's safety valve had become faulty, taking him off passenger duties and leaving him to maintain the yard. Truthfully, James didn't mind shunting anymore. He had learned how to shunt the trucks properly, and the trucks don't give him as much trouble. However, there was still one problem for James. And his name was Fergus. Everything James did, Fergus always had something to say. Don't shunt those trucks so roughly. No wonder they always cause you trouble. Do it right, and they won't. James would roll his eyes and continue about his work, and then complain to the others. He's unbearable. He's always going about, telling me how to do it right. What stuff and nonsense. Gordon interjected. And yet, the yards never looked better before he came along. I do say, James, perhaps if you were to stop whining and listen, you'd be as good as he is. Before James could say anything else, Gordon puffed away, leaving James to grumble to himself. Be as good as he is. Yeah, right. Just you wait until you get yours from him. The next night, Gordon came to the sheds, looking guilty as he puffed next to James. You were right, James. I was bagging into my coaches, but I was so tired that I bumped into them slightly harder than I intended. That was when Fergus came along and whined about how I should do it right. I'm sorry to call you a uh, whiny engine. I'm sorry to say that this made James become conceited, as he would then begin bragging to every engine around him. To hear Gordon say that I was right, well, I must have become the sharpest engine on the island. Sharp and dazzling red, that's what I am. Every time he left, there was a sigh of relief from the other engines. One day, Henry had derailed and was unable to pull passengers leaving James as the only engine to do the job. James was still stuffed up with ideas on how grand he was while puffing down the line. Then that trouble came. His safety valve was never truly fixed. At that very moment, the valve burst, leaving James to stop in the middle of the tracks. Father! He exclaimed in annoyance. James waited while his crew went to phone for help. And when it did, he didn't like what came. Fergus backed up in front of James, coupling up in front. Oh, great, James grumbled. You're here? You can't pull me and the coaches. Well, I still got to try, Fergus replied. It wouldn't be right if I didn't, and I've got to do it right. It was then that Fergus started to pull. Much to James' surprise, the train began to move. It was a 
slow journey. But Fergus took James all the way to the next station, leaving him red in the face. James came to the sheds that night. Fergus told the other end just the whole story. All the while, James decided that the right thing to do was to remain completely silent. 